But I believe worship is intended. That's right. I believe our worship should be intentional. That's right. Our praise, our service. I, I believe that our relationship with God must be intentional. It can't be accidental. It can't be happenstance. It can't be something that we just meander into. But it's something that we determine in our life as a priority. Yeah. It's something that we choose to believe. And let me talk about that now. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So walk with me for a moment in the word, if you would, please, as we talk about the resurrection and the life. Father, I thank you that you are faithful to us and that you are merciful and kind and your great grace is sufficient. Yet again today, your mercies I found to be new this morning. So, Lord, I pray that we would all find you to be the life that we live and the life that we have hope in. To know, God, that this is not the end of the story, but yet there is a better day, a better word coming. And so, Lord, I pray that you would touch us and anoint us. And thank you, God, for your good grace and your love. And help us now to receive and to respond to this. Anoint me and anoint this people. Anoint me to be your mouthpiece. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you live forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the church say amen. It was there in the beginning, in the garden, in the cool of the day, a place and a time most accommodating, that the voice of God came walking, the word said. Calling out to Adam and Eve, asking, seeking, to know where they were. Look at it if you would, please. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? The one who knows all, sees all, the, the one who's everywhere all at the same time, yes. ask of these frail, fallen, ashamed, broken people, yes. where are you? Yes. Uh, it, was, it was not that he did not know where they were. Um, in, in fact, for he did, he, he knew, he knows. Uh, nothing, nothing is hid from his sight. But the question was searching for something to be answered much deeper. Where art thou? Do you understand this? He knew where they were. He could, he could see past all the things that surrounded them. and It was not a question that he did not have yet an answer for, but it was, it was something that he was asking them. Where are you? The question was searching for something to be answered that was much, much deeper. He knew, but... He knew, but did they? Wow. Um, he could see what had happened, but the question was, were they really aware of what they did and the consequences of it? Where are you? Oh my God. They had hidden themselves among the trees, trying to hide their nakedness, trying to hide, in other words, their shame and, and, and the sin that had now in, in entered in and encountered in their life. Where are you, Adam? It was the searching question, voice of God, where are you? The question still resonates to this day in the life of us all, if, if we only will hear it. Where are we? Where are you? Uh, many spend their life hiding among the things that continually grow in and around us. That's, that's who we are. That's how we live our life. We hide among the trees. Uh, the invited and the uninvited sin that makes us not want to answer or see the light of the Savior that is constantly seeking and searching for us, that is probing, if you would, that is trying to pull away and push away the things that we are trying to, to hide behind, the layers, the coverings that we continually build in our life. That's what happened next. If you go on and read a little bit more in this, they put on another covering. They, they layered so that they could, they could hide away from the shame and the sin that was on them. And don't we still do that this day? Every one of us. Man in the pulpit, everybody in the pew, that's what we do. We layer. We find something to hide behind, some excuse, some reason. We become the victim. We blame this, we blame that. We, we point to someone or something and say that's, that's the reason. And so we hide. 
Many spend their life hiding among the things that just grow in and around us continually, the uninvited, invited sin. Hiding in shame from the sin that, that reminds us of what we have done and just how lost and how broken we are. Because most of the time, we like them, Adam and Eve, we hear the voice of God calling to us. Yes, we do. Most of us hear the voice of God calling to us. We, we know the grip of conviction when we take a, a bite of the sin that, that we should not even be touching. We know it, we feel it, we sense it. Even, even in the approach, do you, do you understand this? I want this to communicate now today. Even in the approach to it, we know in the approach, the approach that, that we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, before we ever cross the threshold of sin, uh, the temptation of it pulls us and draws us and we know and, and so because of that, we, we're shameful. We feel it, we sense it, we feel the love of the Savior calling out to us in our heart and, and so we hide. Uh, we hide. Shame and sin simply makes us hide. We're still doing it today. Everybody's doing it today in the world. Uh, it just makes us hide. He first spoke to Eve and then to Adam, telling them of what would be now that they had eaten of the fruit. Look at this, if you would, please, in the book of Genesis. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Uh, in sorrow that shall bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed now. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shalt thou, shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it... Wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Multiplied sorrows, pain, cursed ground, thorns and thistles, work and sweat. That was the path placed before them for the sin that they had accepted and eaten. But it was the final judgment given that defined it all. All this, all this will be your life from here on, Adam. All this will be the life for all of humanity from this moment on, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Simply stated, death. That's what God was stating to Adam. This is where this is, where this is all leading to. Because you decided to obey me, because you decided not to believe, this is the march that shall be onward and you shall go back to the dust from where you were created from. In other words, you're going to die. That was the sentence of sin. All the multiplied sorrow, all the pain, hard soil, cursed ground, thorns and thistles, uh, sweat of the brow. It was all just a deterioration to death. Everybody see that and understand that? It was all just one thing after the other that was leading to the ultimate day of death. With one bite, sin assaulted humanity for all time. Uh, it, it would be the thing that would weigh down the world, creation. I talked about it last week uh, and the week before. Creation would groan under the burden of the weight of sin. Uh, sin would decay and destroy whatever it could find in its path. It would just corrode and eat away at whatever substance that might be. Whatever it could touch, that's what it would touch and that's what it would decay. But when it came to Adam and when it came to Eve and to every one of us all, it would be ruthless. Sin would be ruthless. It may rust away the car that you drive. Yes, it's a result of it. It may deteriorate the walls in your home and things may break down all around you. But for you and I, flesh, sin would be ruthless. Uh, it, it would produce pain. It would weather and weary the body and the walk as years would pass by. Thorns and thistles, in other words, there, there would always be opposition to the onward progression. There would always be something that would remind me of my mortality. There would always be something when you wake up with that ache and that pain in the morning. Uh, it would remind you that you are just corruptible. It would be there. That was the result. That is the result of sin. It would always be there. Death would always have its pull on us back to the dust. It would be. Trying to take from us the life that God wanted us to have. Trying to tell us with every pinch and every pain and every sadness and every shame that we are hopeless. Sin would try to tell us that we are hopeless, just death and decay. That was our lot in life. We could hope for no better. We'd just be here for a, for a breath. We'd be here for a moment, and the wind would come, and, the, and we'd be extinguished. The candle would go out. That was where Martha and Mary were at. They were standing and staring at, at death and decay of, of their brother Lazarus. That's where we just read from in the book of John, the 11th chapter. 
It was the story of the death of Lazarus. Four days had passed since he had died, and now Jesus stood there uh, seeing uh, the sorrow, seeing the result and the presence of the pain that they were going through, that we all have gone through, that we all have felt. If only, if only you, if only you had been here. If only you had been here, they said. If only you would have come sooner, he would not have died. If only you would have answered the prayer like we prayed it, he would not be in that grave. If only you would have done what we had asked, it, it, it wouldn't be this way. Jesus looked at Martha and told her that her brother would rise again. And that's where we are in this story, in that 25th verse. She agreed and she affirmed that, in fact, he would rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Her theology was sound. She was not off base there. She was sound in her theology. It was right. But Jesus wanted her to see more than just the coming theology. He wanted her to see the presence of the theology. Jesus said unto her, look at this. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, uh, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Therein was the question, and therein is still the question this day for us. Do you believe this? That is the question that is asked. It was the question that caused Eve to touch. Everybody understand this. It was the question that caused Eve to, take and, uh, uh, to touch and to take the fruit in the garden. Do you really believe what God says? That was the, the first enticement of sin. That was the first enticement of the serpent. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that if you touch that or if you take that, that it's going to cause that? Do you really believe that he's trying to keep something uh, from you that's going to harm you? Don't you think that's good for you? Do you really believe that? It, it, it's what we hear echoed in our world this day. Do we really believe all this? Hear me, Pentecostal. Hear me, Saint of God. Hear me, Christian. Do we really think this is real? Those are the, those are the questions that, if they are not sent to us verbally, uh, they are communicated to us silently. Do we really believe this? Do we really think this is real? Do we really believe in a hell? Do we really believe in a heaven? Do we really believe that he rose again? Do we really believe that, that we need this? Does it really matter how we live? Does it really matter what we stand for? Is it going to make any difference in the long run? We, we debate that out in our mind. It's the same lie that's been told time and time again to all people of all time. And it's a question that must be answered in every heart in this place. Do we really believe this? Do we believe that he is, in fact, the resurrection and the life? That, that's the, that is the, the point that we all come to. We can talk about all day long. We can talk about coming to an altar. Everybody on the right say amen. We can talk about coming to an altar and repenting of our sins, being baptized in the name of Jesus and being filled with the Holy Ghost. But first we must answer the question, do we really believe that he rose again? Do we really believe this book? Do we, do we really embrace it? Is it, is it more than just a, a, a tabletop piece in the middle of our home? Is it really the bread of life? Is it really the word of life? Is it really the light of life? Because most of us are often like a Martha standing at the grave of her brother sealed with a stone, only seeing the death and the defeat of what is before us. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, and Jesus said, take away, take away the stone. Are we done with that for a while? Is that out? It is? Of all Sundays, for the else we were having trouble, of all Sundays. No, it doesn't happen on a Monday. It doesn't happen on a Tuesday. It's going to happen on Easter. So, you're going to have to go with me the old-fashioned way. Crack your Bibles open. It's going to be okay. Or, or turn your cell phones on, whatever, whatever works for you now, all right? We'll be okay. Just walk with me. All right. This is what he said. Take my word for it. In John eleven thirty nine. 39, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. Here was the answer. Come on, stick with me. Here was the answer standing next to her. The voice from the cool of the day, the one who had hollowed out the valleys and dredged out the depths of the sea, the one who hung the stars in the sky and separated the light from the dark, and all she could think of was the smell. You getting this? The one who planted the flower in the soil, the one who made the cool breeze blow in the middle of the day, Ah, the one who made that salty, sweet air by the seaside. And all she could think of was, he stinks. 
That's not too unlike us. We sit together in heavenly places. We feast at the table of forgiveness. We rub shoulders on a daily basis with all that is high and holy. And yet all we can think about and say, this stinks. Wow. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Come on, if, that's, if, you, if you don't agree with me, then you need to be at this altar immediately. Um, we got everything around us. Why is it? We can become, everybody hear me right now. We can, be so, we can become so consumed cursing the darkness that is around us that we forget to bless the light that's within us. Uh, we can point at this and we can point at that and, and, and we can get upset and we can look at what's broken and what's defeat and what's down and what's death. Multiplied sorrows, pain, sweat, and thorns and thistles. That's what he said at the beginning. That's all we see, and that is what consumes us. It just stinks. Wow. We just get caught up with how bad it smells. Life sometimes just does not make sense. Life sometimes just does not smell good. The stench, stench of, of sin, just, it just won't go away. No, it's not fair. I recognize it, it, life's not fair. It, it doesn't make sense sometimes. It, it doesn't work out the way that we want it. Thorns and thistles, pains and problems, sadness and sorrow, sweat and sickness, disease and defeat, fears and failure, sin and shame. It can stink. Huh. We can get consumed with, with it uh, if we're not careful and forget that standing right here next to us standing with us all the while is the resurrection and the life when the answer is simply we just have to believe wow. it's that simple i know it stinks i know he's been dead four days but i want to tell you that standing here with me in this pulpit today sitting there right with you in your calamity going through what you're going through right now right beside you every step of the way is the resurrection and the life and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you i know life's broken but i know he lives i know it's bad but i know he's good I know it doesn't feel right, but I know he's righteous. Come on, anybody agree with me right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to believe, at least in my mind, I know the word doesn't say it, so if you'll allow me a little bit of liberty here right now, just walk with me. I have to believe that he stood there with Martha that day at that tomb, and she said, I know he's going to live again, but he's stinking right now. I can, I can imagine that God just reached over and grabbed her by the hand and, and just held her hand for a minute. I know that, but you've got to believe in me. You've got to trust me. Come on, somebody, hear me. You're not alone right now. You've got to trust him. Yeah, you may be going through something, but you're not alone. He's right there with you. You just have to choose to believe in the life. Uh, stop letting the life of flesh keep you from living in the spirit. All right, I will. Thank you. Amen. Stop letting, stop letting this life of the flesh keep you from living in the spirit. Uh, three days, three days, three days, Jesus laid in that tomb, sealed with a stone. Darkness and defeat seemed to be all that was left. I talked about it last week. Why didn't he come back? Why didn't he uh, resurrect on the first day? Because there was necessity for the third day. Sometimes it is the necessity and the will of God that we learn to wait on him. Because sometimes I just need to get past the fact that things stink and know that God is the Savior. Three days he laid in that tomb, sealed with a stone, darkness, defeat. It seemed all that was left. But he had already said it to Martha. He is the resurrection. It was the present tense for the future. He is the resurrection and the life. This word was already settled in heaven, as the psalmist said. It just simply must believe. Come on, nothing in this world is going to change the fact that he lives. The promises of God, they are what? They are yea and amen. Come on, sometimes you just got to put your foot down. And you just got to stand there. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. You just have to stand there. You have to believe. And even if it takes, even if your hands are shaking, and even if you're feeling a little bit intimidated and you don't know what to do, you just sometimes just have to stand there and let the weak say that I am strong. And believe in God that, that at that moment that you need to step out of the boat, that there's going to be a solid water that you can stand on, even though it does not make sense. Why? Because he is the resurrection and the life. Uh, death doesn't make sense. Uh, and, and life doesn't make sense. But can I tell you, when God is on the scene, everything comes to be as it should be. Amen. Huh. His word is settled. So the question has to be asked, what are you believing today? 
Uh, where's your hope? What's your faith in? Uh, is it in this world and what it offers, the, the sin that does not satisfy, or is it in Jesus, the resurrection and the life? Let me go back to where I began. Um, the often overlooked point is that he came to Adam and Eve, look at this, that he came to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. His voice came walking, the word said, in the cool of the day. Now there's so much to understand here about the word. So much to understand about the word made flesh. So much to understand about the spoken word. The, the voice of God came walking in the cool of the day. The voice of God was walking. Uh, it was moving. The word of God was moving. Because the word of God is alive. Um, he could have come. Look at this if you would. He could have come when it was most difficult for them. He could have come when the conditions were the least favorable. He could, have, he could have not called out to them. I think this is unique. He could have not called out to them at all, but rather appeared in a moment where they were hiding, uh, casting judgment without any tempering. He could have just appeared before them, but instead he approached them at a time, in a way, in a condition that was most conducive for them to hear from him. Uh, he let his voice, his word, search for them in a way that they could hear. In a place and a time where it was cool, where it was acceptable. Some, some translators translate it to be that, that it was a soft breeze that he came in. God is speaking to you this day, musicians, if you would, please. God is speaking to you this day by his word in a way that you can hear him. And in a time of your life where you need to hear him. You follow this? He came to them at a moment and in a place at a time when they needed to hear him. And, and even though they were hiding behind uh, uh, the encumbrances and all the trees and all the foliage, all the things that were there, uh, still he searched for them. Even though he knew what they were doing, even though he knew where they were, even though he knew what had happened, he still searched for them. It's still the same today. That God comes to us in ways and speaks to us through his word in ways that we can hear him if we will just believe. Believest thou this? When you feel that nudge, when you feel that, uh, that thing in your heart, when you're going towards something you know you shouldn't be going towards, when you're, when you're searching for an answer and you just can't seem to find it in everything else out there and, and you thought if I go here, if I do this or I move there, I do that, then that's going to be the thing. And when you get there, you find out that it, uh, it's just not it. Right. Or you buy this or you get that or you, and, and, and you think all the while, well, that's going to make me happy and that's going to satisfy. But deep down, you, 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 you sense, you, anybody, this making sense? You know that, well, that's just not the answer. That didn't satisfy. That didn't. I didn't scratch that itch. That didn't, that didn't make any sense. Right. Uh, because if you'll just listen, if you'll just believe, he'll come talking to you, walking to you, searching for you. He is searching today at a time of life that you need to hear him the most in a way that you can hear him the clearest. Huh. Wanting you to know that he's the one that gives you life. He's the one that brings you back to life. And he is the resurrection and he is your life today. We are saved from death. Ah, oh, that soil in your garden this year, it may get hard. That rain may pound on that soil and, and those, those necks of those beans may get broken. It may not grow like you want it to grow. It may not, it may not produce the yield that you want it to produce. But the end of your life is not that garden. It's not your yard, it's not the walls on this church, it's not your home, it's not all the things that we accumulate and get. Now that's part of the process and it's going to break down and it's going to deteriorate and destroy. But can I tell you what your life really is? Man's life does not consist in the things which he possesseth, the word said. Your life is here. Your life is found in Jesus. Because he's the resurrection. And he's alive. And so he wants you to know that you can live. You can live again. And we have to choose to believe. We have to choose to get past the sweat and the smell of it all and, and the pain and the problems. And we have to look to the one standing right next to us. Come on, somebody. Stop cursing the darkness. In a world that has gone to a nature very quickly of constantly complaining about something. 
Stop cursing the darkness and start blessing the light that is within you. Start recognizing that God is for you and not against you. And he wants you to live. Someone lift their hands right now as we stand to our feet and they begin to sing and we begin to pray and the Lord is magnified. Come on, do that with me right now. God, we praise you. God, we glorify you. We exalt you, Lord. Come on, if you need to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, this is the day for that life to happen in you. This is the moment that you need. Come on, somebody pray with me right now. God, we need you. Come on, we'll take communion here in a moment. We got time to pray for a moment here. I love you, Jesus.